Saint Lincoln Cathedral, the third largest in England and built originally in 1092, overlooks the venue of the remaining first round match. The local club had failed narrowly to gain promotion to the third division. 77 goals gave them a place in the Watney Cup. Dixie McNeil, number 11, signed from Northampton, had scored 13 of that number in half a season. And now he was to test Burnley of the second division. Seen in unfamiliar white shirts, and Paul Fletcher, number nine, one of the few players to be bought by the Burnley club. The crowd all set, and Burnley seventh in the second division with 70 goals to their credit, attacking the goal to the left. The keenness shows right at the start for Lincoln as McGough comes back to find his own goalkeeper. The first threat of the match also comes to the fourth division side. It's Bradley's shot and Walden who gets back to save his own goalkeeper Stevenson who was beaten. The referee is the very experienced Norman Burtonshaw. Frank Casper for Burnley. He screws it wide and Ingham can't get on the end of it crowd enjoying the goal mouth action, but Burnley are beginning to settle down. Casper again for them, and then Leighton James, a young Welsh international. And a fine shot hits the post with McNally beaten. Into the second half, and Lincoln still going well. George Pedden, number two. Shot in Stim with the cross, and it's Waldron's header that clears the danger. McMahon now, and knocked away by Nulty. The fourth division side certainly giving as good as they get, but now Casper for Burnley. Ingham just gets in as a Lincoln defender rather commits himself, and the ball again comes to Leighton James. Ingham, as Burnley increased the pressure, Casper with the goalkeeper beaten, but his shot hits the side netting. With all these chances going begging, a draw begins to look more and more likely. Colin Sim once more for Lincoln. And Waldron has to chase out with Percy Freeman. And as the centre forward gets round him, Waldron has a tuck at his shirt. The free kick is given and a chance for the 4th Division side. Burnley pull everybody back. And Thompson just gets it away. And it's Dobson who gets the corner out. And it's hurt in the process. As Burnley build up on attack again, the match is to be decided by one mistake by George Pettit. He loses the flight of the ball, and Leighton James nips in to score the only goal of the match. All the Burnley players rush to congratulate Leighton James, leaving George Pedden a very lonely figure. Leighton James enjoying the congratulations, but he knows that the goal really was given away by one mistake in a tight match. Alan West, number 13, and Keith Newton, the former England World Cup player, congratulating the scorer. And that goal ensures that one representative from each division will take part in the semi-finals. Sheffield United, Burnley, Bristol Rovers and Peterborough. Over to Turf Moor for the second semi-final. Bristol Rovers arrive in confident mood. Relaxed Rick Shepherd, the goalkeeper, signs an autograph before going into the ground ahead of centre forward Sandy Allen and midfield man Wayne Jones. Supporters are mainly in claret and blue scarves of Burnley, but one or two have made the journey up from Bristol as well. The Football League is well represented. Sam Bolton on the right, the vice president, and the league secretary Alan Hardacre in jocular mood. One step to the final, but Bristol will be no pushover. That's how the local evening paper sees it as Burnley precedes their third division opponent onto the luckless green turf of Turf Moor. Can Bristol do to their second division opponent away from home what they did to the first division team from Wolves at home? That's the question. Brian Godfrey leads them out. Bristol now wearing white shirts and dark shorts.
Stevenson, the Burnley goalkeeper, being given some practice. And you can see what a beautiful pitch this is at this Lancashire club. Eleven is Leighton James. Surprises the absence of David Thomas from the Burnley side. The Bristol Rovers, not surprisingly, are unchanged. Sticking to the side that scored two against Wolves. Bristol Rovers get the match away, attacking the goal to our left. Stevens, Sandy Allen, beaten by Dobson. Dingham. Referee is Ted Wallace, who works for the British Railways at Crewe. Michael Dock at his free kick. Colin Waldron trying to get up. Taylor taking no chances, conceding the corner. Bannister number 12. Not a particularly good one, but a missed kick and a save on the line by Lindsay Parsons from his own fullback. Bannister doing a lot of chasing. This is Wayne Jones. Stevens to his right. In comes Stevens. Driven across. Blocked by uh, Worth Waldron and then Doherty who put it over the top. Burnley under some pressure. Stevens and again on the receiving end. He's just got a touch to tip it over the bar. Applauded by, Tommy, by uh, Michael Doherty, Tommy's son. I think Brian Godfrey, the skipper, very happy with Bristol's start. Mike Green, number four. Sandy Allen, moving for the return ball, playing it off nicely too. And Prince coming up, number six, right in the corner. Beautiful move by Bristol Rovers. Prince, who was in at the start of it. Sandy Allen, who did a lot of running up front to take the return ball and lay it off to Frankie Prince, moving in on the blind side of the defence. And a really good left foot shot found the corner. 25 minutes now of this first half gone. Burnley, a goal down. Ingham waiting in the centre. Shepard taking no chances, pulling it over the angle. Wearing a very natty cap this evening. Shepard again coming for it. Good punch, a very good punch off the head of uh, Thompson. Go kick. So away we go on the second half. The Crystal Rovers leading by a goal to nothing, scored by Prince at the 15th minute of the match. Wayne Jones and Alan West, who's come on as a substitute. Stevens. And Bannister. Stevens really getting in between uh, Newton and Thompson there, and Bannister, who knocks it in. So with only three minutes of the second half gone, the third division side take a 2-0 lead. That now asks an awful lot of a young Burnley side. They may be in the second division, but they're a pretty young side. And Bannister delighted about the whole thing. Scored one against Wolves from the penalty spot, and now one against Burnley. West, number 13. Wayne Jones. Sunlight forming a nice picture at Turf Moor, looking at it then from uh, Shepherd's point of view. Typical of the challenge of Sandy Allen. So Keith Newton fouled there, but he gets away with it. It's Newton again, number three. Prince. They really are going at it hammer and tongs at the moment. Away by Taylor. Rovers coming away with it again. Big Larry Taylor, number five. Six is Prince. And it's all over. Rovers have got through to the Watney Cup final. There's Frankie Prince, who scored the first goal. The second coming from Bannister after only three minutes of the second half. And the third division side have done it again and go through to the Watney Cup final, where they will meet first division Sheffield United on their own ground at the Eastfield Stadium.